Hallelujah, Christ arose. Isn't that some good news, church? Christ arose. And we're here to celebrate our risen Savior. And I tell you what, he has a message for you today. And we are so excited that he is here in this place and he is speaking to us. And it is my prayer that God speaks to your heart during this message. Because there's a part of the resurrection story that we are going to focus on today. And there's so much we could focus on about the resurrection. So many great elements. But there's one element in particular. One object we're going to focus on today. And that is the stone. Simply the stone. And so as we get into this, uh, into this message, we're going, to, we're going to jump right into God's word. And we're going to focus on the stone that covered the tomb. And so we're going to be in Matthew chapter 27, verses 57 through 61. And it says this, As evening approached, there came a rich, fran- rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. And so we have two witnesses, two ladies who saw uh, Joseph of Arimathea put Jesus into the tomb and sealed it with a large stone. Let's jump to chapter 28. After the Sabbath, at dawn, so this is three days later, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, same two ladies, went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. That was his assignment. I've told you. Come from heaven, and I'm telling you, I rolled away the stone, and he is risen. You know, there in, in, the, in the garden, in this area where the tomb was, it's like a, it's like a cemetery. And, and you walk around cemeteries. There's, there's a cemetery just, just right here by the school in this area right here in Emerson. And you walk through the, through the graveyard. You can see markers. You can see people's names. And you can see maybe even a, a phrase about that person or how they live their life. And so that marker, that gravestone shows it's an indication of who is buried there. Well, Jesus, Jesus had a marker as well. In fact, um, the, the Roman government put a seal on the tomb to make sure that uh, nobody came and, and, and rolled away the stone and tried to take the body of Jesus. And, and not only did they seal it, but they also placed two soldiers there to guard it. So you could tell that, man, if you're walking in that, in that garden and if you're walking near the tomb, you could see, man, somebody important is buried there. There's a Roman seal and there's Roman soldiers. It was, it was a marker. The, the, the stone marked the place where Jesus was laid to rest. And the Roman government hopefully seeing no more of Jesus. So... Jesus is, is, is honored that you are here to, to celebrate his resurrection. And we are here, we are here doing that. We, we have sang songs about it. But I want to bring this back, and I feel like God wants us to go here. I want us to talk about not only the resurrection of Jesus, but I want to talk about your resurrection. 
your resurrection. Let me explain. I believe most of us in this room are buried by something. You're buried by something. I believe if you, if, if you uh, there may be times in your life when you've been buried by some things and you've been able to get out from underneath that. Some of it has been maybe depression, maybe buried by a, an awful relationship. Maybe you've been buried with, with health issues. Maybe you've been buried with, with uh, emotional outbursts or anger. Or maybe you've been, uh, been buried by, um, by jealousy. Maybe you're buried by being a people pleaser, trying to, trying to please others. What has buried you? Maybe there's, maybe there's something in your life that you can think of that, you know what, Frank? I've been trying to get out from underneath this stuff, and I'm just buried. I'm just buried. And today, we're going to talk about the stone that covers your tomb. What has buried you? And whatever has buried you has also labeled your stone. And just like if you were to walk out to the cemetery, you can read the stone. Many people in your life can read what's on the stone. That thing in your life that, that can bury you has labeled your stone. Again, depression, anger, bitterness, whatever it is, it can label you. And so how do we have the same resurrection power that Christ had. I mean, Christ was, was raised from the dead. Christ was raised. He was resurrected. How are we resurrected? How do we get that same resurrection power? Well, what does a resurrection look like? What does it mean? As we, as we have looked, you can look at the story of Lazarus. So look at the story of Lazarus, how Lazarus was a, was a very good friend of Jesus. Lazarus had two sisters, Mary and Martha. And Lazarus became really sick, and Jesus was a few days away from, uh, from the town where Lazarus lived. And word got to Jesus that his, his best friend was, was ill, and they asked Jesus to come and heal him. And actually, Jesus delayed that and as he was walking towards the town where Lazarus lived Martha his sister met up with Jesus she met up with Jesus and she she confronted him and and she uh she was able to to say look Jesus you're 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 late because guess what? Lazarus is already dead. I can imagine how that conversation went. The emotions. My brother is dead. You're late. And Jesus said, he, he, he's going to rise again. He's going to be resurrected. And of course, Martha was thinking, well, yeah, in and, 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 and the great resurrection when everybody's taken up, sure. And Jesus, is, Jesus was saying, look, I... I am the resurrection and the life. Look at where it says in John chapter 11, 25. Jesus said to her, to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Here's what's really important, and this is something we all need to grasp here. Jesus was not talking about an event. Jesus was not talking about the resurrection like it was an event. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. See, folks, we got to stop thinking that the resurrection is an event. The resurrection is a person. The resurrection is a person. And that person's name is Jesus. It's not about an event. It's about a person. You see, most of most of us 
have been waiting for an event to roll away the stone and resurrect us from whatever grave we're in, whatever has us buried. Maybe you're, you're waiting for an event, like maybe that person to reach out to you. Maybe you're having issues with them, and you're just waiting for them to come to you first. You're waiting for that event to happen. Or maybe you're waiting for that, that job, to land that job, to get, uh, to get uh, out and, uh, from under the, the, uh, the weight of your financial situation. Maybe you're waiting for you that, that non-selfish spouse of yours to, to come forward and, and, and break through and say, I'm sorry, and apologize. Maybe you're waiting for them to do that. Or maybe, maybe you're, uh, you're waiting for your children to obey. Maybe if, you, if you're living under the, under the, the weight, and, and, and if you're in the grave of, of trying to raise your children, you're just not really getting anywhere, and you find yourself yelling at them all the time, and, and everything, maybe you're just waiting, well, maybe I just need to wait for them to obey. Maybe you're trying to get healthier, and you're waiting for the, your coworkers to stop bringing donuts to your office, whatever that is. So, instead of waiting for an event, we need to invite the person who is the resurrection, who can resurrect you from whatever grave you're in, or from whatever thing in your life has you buried. This means that it takes a person of Jesus to roll away the stone. To pull you out of your grave. The Apostle Paul explains in Romans chapter 8 verse 11. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Because of his spirit who lives in you. For those who have accepted Christ as Savior and invite, you, invite him into your life and your heart, you have that same resurrection power living inside of you through the Holy Spirit. And many times, y'all, we forget about that. We forget that it's about a person and not about an event and not about things changing in your life, but letting Jesus change you from the inside out. So how does this happen? How does this resurrection power this come about? What, so what brought Christ into the world? What brought Christ into the world? It, it, we can simply say that, that God's love did. The, the verse that most people are very familiar with, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. What drives resurrection power? It's the love of God. The love of God brought Jesus into the world. What kept Jesus on the cross? So people say the nails. I don't think so. I think his love for you kept Jesus on the cross. Romans 5, 8 says, but God d- demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died on the cross. And his love for us kept him on the cross. What raised Christ from the dead? What raised Christ from the dead? It was God's love for his son. God's love for his son. He sent his son to a cruel world. They treated him horribly. He died for our sins, was buried. That's enough separation. Let's get the boy back home. So God with his love for his son is what raised Christ from the dead. So what is the bottom line, the essence, the core power of the resurrection? It's love. It is pure love. So let me me ask you about, about your stone. 
What, what is your stone? What has buried you? What marks your gravestone? You know, I have a, uh, I have a stone right here. I got this from my backyard. I have a few of these in my backyard. And, and this stone um, has, has a certain purpose. It goes around our fire, our fire pit. But you know, just like this stone, what does your stone that's covering your grave look like? The thing that has you buried, whatever you're overwhelmed by. Maybe, maybe, it's, a, maybe it's just a cold stone of, of bitterness and pride. Maybe bitterness and pride has buried you and, and, and made you into somebody you're really not. Or maybe, maybe it's a harsh stone of hurtful words and unbridled emotions. Maybe you feel like you're just trapped in that of the hurtful words. You, you, don't, you, you treat people badly. You say things. You, you always put your foot in your mouth. How you treat your kids, how you treat your spouse and it's hard to break free from that. It has you buried. Or maybe it's a black stone of secret sins that no one knows about except for you and God. Or maybe it's a cracked stone of a broken marriage or, or broken relationship. That, that broken relationship or that hurtful marriage could be the thing that has buried you. Or maybe it's a, it's a rugged stone of unhealthy lifestyle. Or maybe it's a smooth stone of acceptance as you try to please everyone. It's really nice and smooth on the outside, but, but really it's just a stone. And it's still a marker for what has buried you. So... What is going to resurrect you? What is going to resurrect you? What is going to resurrect me? It is going to be love. Love is a thing that will resurrect us. Love, the power of his love, will resurrect us. You are resurrected from the grave of acceptance and pleasing others when you decide to love your family more than your job. Some of you might be stuck, buried under work, under pleasing others, to where the people that mean most in your life, they, they're not really feel the love from you. And so what is going to pull you out of that? It's your love for your family. You are resurrected from the grave of bitterness and pride when you decide to replace the hate with loving words of an apology and forgiveness. What, if, you're, if you're under that weight, if you're buried under bitterness and anger and pride, what is going to break through? Loving the other person, your enemy, and going to them and telling them you forgive them or even offer your forgiveness. That's the only way out of that tomb, you do realize. Or maybe you decide the, the, the loving words, uh, um, you, you were resurrected from the grave of unhealthy living when you, when you love yourself and love those affected by your lifestyle, okay? You could be treating yourself in a, in a way that, that is harmful, okay? You could be, whether, it, whether it, it, it's, it's drinking too much, or whether you're smoking and you know it's not good for you or you're not eating right and it's affecting you and eventually it's going to affect your family. When you decide, look, I love my, my body that God gave me and I love myself not to do this again. I love my family to do everything I can to stop smoking, to do everything I can to stop Excessive drinking, coming home drunk. Some of you might be in this room, you know somebody or you yourself could be involved in drugs and, and you know that's going to cause some issues. 
When you decide, I love my, my family, those around me, or I love myself too much to do this again. That is what pulls you out of your grave. It's love. It's pure love. Just like God loved us so much that he sent his son, and just like Jesus loved us so much that he stayed on the cross, and just like God loved his son so much that he pulled him out of the grave. What is the core of resurrection power? It's love. When we get to the point to where we stop doing the things that we know are causing other people harm, are causing our relationship with God harm, we, we get to the point to where we're saying, okay, God, I love you so much that I'm going to stop doing this. You can look at your spouse and, and tell your spouse, I love you so much then I know what I've been doing, what I've been saying, what, what I've been doing. It's, you're not, I mean, it's causing issues with us. And I love you so much, I'm going to put that aside. And I'm going to do my best not to do that anymore. Tell your kids. You know, kids, I love you so much. I'm going to do everything I can not to yell at you. <laughs> Trust me, there's a lot of. Loud voices in our house. And so to be able to tell our kids, look, I love you. Now obey, <laughs> right? Kids, you may say, you know, I love, I love my parents so much, I'm going to obey. You obey out of love. I, we tell our kids all the time, the best way you could show love to us is just obey. First time obedience, that is shows love. Yeah, I mean, another byproduct is respect, yes, but more importantly, it all comes down to love. What is going to remove the stone that is covering whatever has buried you? It is love. When you say once and for all, love wins. Love is going to win. I'm tired of living this way. I'm tired of making these choices. I'm tired of this affecting my families, my friends, my job, my health, whatever it is. I'm tired of it because I want love to win. And on Resurrection Sunday, the first Resurrection Sunday, it was love that won. Love won. And we're celebrating Resurrection Sunday, but today I want, I want to encourage you, maybe this needs to be your Resurrection Sunday. When you say, I'm finally going to step out of this grave, I'm finally going to, to let love win. So when love wins, God rolls away the stone. God rolls a stone away, and you walk out of your grave. God rolls a stone away, and you walk out of your grave. You do your part. You love. The love we have for God, the love we have for others, and the love you have for yourself will enable you to walk out of your grave. And let me tell you something, we can't love like Jesus loved or like God loves unless we have Jesus living inside of us. If we have Jesus living inside of us, then we can have the love of Jesus. Some of you are, are waiting for an event to resurrect you. Stop waiting for an event and understand the resurrection is a person. And that person needs to be living inside you. And even those who have, a, who have accepted Christ as Savior down the road and you've been, you, you've, you called yourself a Christian, uh, even a Christ follower, maybe you need to have Jesus fill up more of your soul than ever before. 
and to say, Jesus, I need you to fill me, overflowing with your power and your love. Because resurrection is a person. It's not an event. Jesus said that. So the thing we have to understand is this. We have to, we have to replace our stone with something else. And I want to encourage you to replace it with love. I want to encourage you, just like a, just like a stone seals up a grave, I want you to replace your old stone that marked whatever, whatever grave you're in. I want you to replace that with the stone of love. And you seal up love in your life. And so what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to do something a little different. I have in my hand just a pure white stone. And this stone, you know where it's going to sit? It's going to sit on my desk at work. You know why? Because it's going to remind me that there's people that I love more than other things in my life. There's a wife that I love more than any other woman in my life. More than any other person in my life. Things I look at, I look at with purity. Why? Because of love. Because I love this woman. I, it's going to remind me that I need to go home and stop working longer because I have a family that loves me and I'm going to love them. And it's love that's going to pull me out of the grave of that thing that has me buried. For you, it could be worry, it could be depression, it could be fear, it could be relationships, it could be money issues, whatever it is. We're all buried under something. Something has, has us buried. Yeah, some, some, of it, some of us are like maybe one foot under. Some of us are six feet under. Some of us are like 30 feet under. But it doesn't matter how deep you're buried. God's power can resurrect you. And he resurrected. God resurrected Jesus because of love. You can be resurrected on this Resurrection Sunday through love. So I'm going to ask each and every one of you to take a stone. And so here in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to get up. And I'm going to ask you to pick out a stone. And I want you to bring that stone to where you might be at your office. It might be in your car. It might be in your bathroom counter. Whatever it is, I want you to bring that stone as a reminder that this is going to replace the stone that is marking your current grave. This pure white stone. So while the band comes, they're just gonna kind of play softly. Back over here and back over here in the back, there's a couple of tables. There's a chest with stones. I want you to get up and go grab a stone and come back to your seat and just sit down. And we'll, I'll tell you what we're gonna do with this. So go ahead. Let's do that now. Everybody stand.
what I want you to do. I want you to look at your stone. And some of you maybe want to go as far as get like a Sharpie and actually write what that is going to be, whatever you want to do. But you probably know what this represents. And I want you to just take this opportunity. This stone that represents love, what love is going to pull you out of whatever you're in? Do you need to go to a person and apologize? Do you need to tell someone you love them? Do you need to let love win? Whatever that is, think of that, what that is. And offer that to God. God, this is love, and I need love to win. And so, the resurrection power of Christ lives within us. And as we replace our old stone with the new stone of love, understand this, that that resurrection power, that spirit that is alive within us from the ashes of defeat, from the things in our life, know this, that it can be something that, that God can do and only God can do because he is here and he is ready to resurrect you. That loving power is ready to resurrect you. And so if you're ready to be resurrected, if you're ready to say, God, Lord Jesus, come, come inside me. Let the love that you displayed on the cross, let the love that God that you displayed by sending your son into the world to die for our sins. Let the love, God, that you displayed by pulling your son out of that grave, let that love rise up in, within me. Let that love be the thing, the power that drives me and resurrect me here today. Resurrect me. And if you believe that, let's stand together and let's sing this really quick. Simple little